Okay, kids, we're back. We're moving on to section 10.2. And the main focus here, section 10.2, is just how is light produced? Where does it come from? And are there any categories that we can put in light in terms of how it's produced, where it comes from? So let's get started. Uh, the production of light most of the time comes from this situation right here. And it, this is an electron going from a lower energy level, a low, lower orbit, gets energy, gets promoted to a higher energy level, which is not stable. So it falls back down to the lower energy. And as it falls back down, it gives up the energy that it gained. And it gives it up as light or a particle of light called a light photon. Now, technically, there's some words here. The lower energy level is called the ground state. It's stable. An electron gets energy, maybe through a chemical reaction, like burning of wood. Maybe heat. If you've ever seen a stove, electric stove element, it, it starts to glow. The electrons are receiving energy. Oops. The electrons are receiving energy from the heat and they're giving off light. Maybe electrical, like the tubes in uh, our classroom, the uh, fluorescent lights, the LED light from your LED TV or different things like that. Oh, I gotta stop doing that. Things like that, all right? They are getting energy from somewhere, these electrons. So the electrons are there in a stable situation. They get energy and they go to that higher energy level, which is called an excited state. It is not stable. So the electron falls back down to the stable state, the ground state. As it falls back down, it gives off light. So let's get into a little bit more detail here. Okay. In all atoms, electrons are in orbit around the nucleus. When the electrons gain energy from some source, the electrons move from a stable lower energy level orbit, the ground state, to a higher one, an unstable higher energy orbit called the excited state. The electron, the electron falls from the excited state back to the ground state and releases light. This is the majority of how light is produced around us through this situation right here. Sources of energy include heat, electricity, chemical. There's many sources. Um, let me give you another one friction right if you rub a piece of metal or steel along the ground that you'll see sparks flying maybe you've seen a piece of metal that uh, is being dragged behind a car maybe some piece of it fell off and it creates a spark all right that's exciting energy electrons same as these other ones and they give off light now let's get let's quantify this a little bit let's quantify this a little bit uh, the amount of energy in the light depends on the amount of energy released when the electron returns to ground state. If it got more energy to become excited, it's going to give more energy off when it falls back down and creates light. The light with the high energy has a high frequency and a short wavelength. That would be violet light. That's the highest energy form of light that I, our eyeballs can see, violet. Energy with low energy, light with low energy has a low frequency and a long wavelength. If we can see it and it's low energy light, it would be red. So red has the lowest amount of energy, orange a little bit more energy, yellow a little bit more energy, green a little bit more energy, blue a little bit more energy, and violet has the highest amount of energy of any light that our eyes can see. Remember, we can only see the visible spectrum. We can't see other things like infrared and ultraviolet and so on. So direct sources of light create their own light and are called luminous. They make their own light. The sun, fire, right? a light bulb. Indirect sources of light reflect light from other sources and are called non-luminous. Example, the moon. Sunlight hits the moon, bounces off the moon, and boom, we can see the moon. Uh, your hand, 
I'm looking at my hand right now. Are you looking at your hand? The light from my office is hitting my hand, bouncing off my hand, and into my eyes. That's the reason I can see my hand. It's not making its own light. It's called non-luminous. We can uh, also classify light in terms of where it comes from. Light produced by the sun or other stars or fire, for that matter, is called natural light. Light produced through human technology is called artificial light. So that's another way of classifying light. And then I'm only going to list these for you because I'm expecting you to read your textbook here. I just summarized it for you. But you're going to be re reading in your textbook and you're going to be reading about incandescent light. All the details are in the textbook. I've just given you a little brief summary here. And these notes have been avail are available to you. The link exists in today's announcement. But when you're talking about the word incandescent, it's making light when we bring things to a very high temperature. So I want you to read about incandescent light in your textbook, and there'll be some questions about it. All right. Uh, fluorescent light is produced when a substance is exposed to some type of electromagnetic radiation, like the fluorescent light bulb tubes in our classroom. I'm going to have you read about that in the textbook to get the greater detail about it. The other one I want you to read in the textbook is phosphorescence. This is stuff like glow-in-the-dark paint. It absorbs energy all day from the light. You turn off the light, you go to sleep, and you're, you don't know, you're, you're, uh, painting of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in your room starts to glow in the dark. And then eventually it fades away. I'm going to have you read about that in the textbook. Chemiluminescence, which is where a chemical reaction produces light. Um, also known as cool light. Now a subset of chemiluminescence is bioluminescence. So chemiluminescence, look at the word chemi. Lumen, meaning light, comes from a chemical reaction. An example would be like glow sticks. I don't know if you've ever seen these. They're very popular around Halloween. Uh, you shake them up or crack them. Two chemicals mix together and they start to glow for a while. All right. Every, every Halloween you'll read about how some kid confused it with uh, candy bites into it and then their mouth glows for a while. Not a good move. Next, bioluminescence from the word biology, life. So life itself producing light, lumen meaning light. Maybe you've seen a firefly. They're kind of cool. They actually have two chemicals in their bodies that they mix together. And when those two chemicals mix together, it produces light. So it happens in life, but it's, a, it's an example of chemiluminescence occurring in a life form. So it's bioluminescence. So I'm going to have you read about that in the textbook. And then uh, turboluminescence, right? From friction, rubbing things together, like sparks. You see sparks happening. Uh, and I'm going to have you read about that in the textbook. Electric discharge, I'm going to have you read about that. Probably my favorite one because I like lightning and the thunder and sitting out and watching the rain. It's kind of cool. I'm going to have you read about electric discharge. And probably the most popular one now because it's taken over in terms of technology. We used to have old-fashioned incandescent light bulbs that glowed really, really hot. Then we switched to the compact fluorescent ones, the swirling ones. Now everyone's buying light-emitting diode light bulbs, LED lights, LED lights. You see them everywhere. LED TV, right? Electroluminescence, LED. I'm going to have you read about that in the textbook. So hopefully before you watched my little video lesson, you watched that really short video. So you watch that really short video. You listen to me now explaining these things to you. You're going to read the textbook, and then you're going to answer some questions. Now, remember, the answers to the questions are available for you right there, so you can compare your work to the right answer. It's a very important form of learning, self-evaluation, make corrections, okay? And that'll get you ready for stuff. Now, remember, 
especially for you kids taking science next year. Yes, it's a little bit different this year. I get it. But you got to learn this stuff to get you ready if you're going to be taking a biology or chemistry or a physics course next year. So don't just say, ah, I'm just going to read Zafiro's answers, whatever. Well, that doesn't really help. You still have to be involved in the learning process. You don't want to get shaky with that. You still have to be disciplined. Anyways, have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.